One of the big obstacles to getting into modular synthesizers and stuff is the cost of the case that you've got to put this in and the power supply. So today I'm going to show you how I made these lunchbox cases made out of literal lunchboxes and the power supplies so that you can cheaply get into modulars, get into doing DIY electronics and they look pretty cool as well. So we're going to build one from scratch. We're going to build it in this. This is an old fashioned uh, thermos uh, space shell lunchbox looks pretty cool doesn't it even better when you've got loads of Eurorack modules inside so the steps in this video can be applied to putting a Eurorack case in pretty much anything and so I'm not going to be giving you exact measurements because you need to take the measurements and decide that for yourself depending on what you're using for your case this lunchbox case is actually a different size to the other ones that I have and I'd recommend trying to find some of those ones because they're exactly 40 HP wide which makes things a bit easier Worth saying also, I can't claim credit for this idea. I saw the case that Citizen made for Tom Whitwell and thought that was a really cool idea. And Tom also makes uh, some portable power supplies for the cases and the link for those is below. We're going to do things slightly differently and have a power supply that plugs into the wall. So the main part of converting this into a synthesizer case is installing your Eurorack rails. These come in all different shapes and sizes, but basically they'll have a profile like this and they'll have a slot where some nuts or a threaded in insert like this can slide into and that is what you screw your Eurorack panels onto. So you probably figured out that Eurorack panels have a standard kind of sizing. Eurorack is designed to fit in three U, the three units of a rack mount case, 128.5 millimeters tall, and they'll all be in multiples of a HP wide. Now what's a HP? HP is 5.08 millimeters. And I make these HP rulers, which are a bit of fun really. So you can measure the spaces in your case and work out how much your bank account is gonna suffer this month. This module is four HP wide, and typically modules will be an even number of HP wide. So you're going to want to make your case, ideally, an even number of HP. So when you're measuring across, you just want to round it to the nearest multiple of 5.08 millimetres. And yes, that's a quarter of an inch to you yanks. Now as normal, the cheapest way is not the easiest way. So the cheapest way to get your rails is get one long rail and cut it to size to make two rails. You could do that in various different ways. Ideally you have something like a bandsaw, but not everybody has a bandsaw. The simplest way is with a hacksaw. All my hacksaw blades are blunt, of course. So you're gonna have to figure out the best way that you can do this. In my case, I'm gonna use one of these rotary cutting tools. Not ideal, but it's what I got. My plan is to cut it very, very slightly wider than I want, and then I can file it down to be a nice edge and exactly the right size. So you could just butt a load of panels together and use that as your guide for how wide you wanna cut the rails, but you wanna double check it with a ruler because some people make the panels so they're slightly thinner so that there's a tolerance between them. Can't stress enough the old adage measure twice cut once probably measure about five times so the nearest even hp width that my case comes to is 42 hp uh it's a little bit wider than that as i've taken the decision that it's gonna bend in a little bit but that'll be fine because if it bulges out then the lid ain't gonna shut is it and really it's 43 hp but I don't want to put one HP in there. So you can use a pen to mark where you want to do your cuts or the more accurate way is to use a scribe. If you've got one of these uh, squares here, there's a little bit here that unscrews and that is a scribe. And you can put it up against the rail to get a perfectly square scribe line. Sanity check yourself, just put it up there and just make sure that you're doing the right length because these rails are not the cheapest. You don't want to be cutting them again. Take the threaded insert out before you cut. Now that is not pretty, but uh, you watch, we will clean that up good. And to make things slightly easier for you, maybe cut the second rail from the other end that has been nicely cut. So that you only have to tidy up one end of each rail. Oh, so you thought the hacksaw in was hard enough work. Now we're gonna get to the filing. We're gonna pretty up the ends of these. You're gonna get yourself a decent metal file, not like this piece of rubbish that I've got, but it would do the trick. Be warned with filing, your natural tendency is to round off the corners as you move your arm so you need to do proper up and down strokes now I find the easiest way is just plonk it on down here and then 
put your file down on desk and you can get properly on the end of it like that but that does mean you're going to gouge big bits in your desk doesn't really matter for me but don't do it in your mum's dining room there we are there are our finished rails just to prove to you that you can get good results with just a hacksaw and a file this is the proper cut end that came to me but this is my end and that's not too bad is it that's not too bad with simple tools from the front looks absolutely spot on now if you've got threaded inserts you're going to want to cut those to length as well phew okay so we got the two rails all we need to do now is get them stuck in the case now you could mess around trying to measure everything but there's a much easier way what you want to do is get two blank panels these are two of mine that i make you've got the telegraph code panel and you've got the ruler and through hole panel and you want to screw them in to the ends of the rails so now you've got a rectangular frame like this and the rails are spaced exactly the right distance apart and I'll show you how the rails attach to the case they're on this side and then the screw goes through this side and this bit here is where the bolt is gonna go through that will hold it into the case so now you just want to take a measurement and measure from the middle of this bolt hole to the middle of the other bolt hole and we'll call that the rail to rail distance my rail to rail distance is 122 millimeters but yours might be different so you need to check it again you can mess around with rulers but i prefer to in a simple way you just get a piece of paper hold it on one end with your thumb to the other here and then fold it in half and hey presto there is your midpoint. So now that we've got this midpoint marked, we can take the rail to rail measurement, divide it by two and measure out from the middle to get the two marks for drilling our bolt holes. Do that for both sides and do check it against the actual rails to make sure that you haven't made any silly mistakes. So now we've got the markings here and here, but we need to figure out the depth that we want to set our rails back. Obviously this is going to be different for everybody depending on which case you're using. But what you want to take into account is that you want the lid to close with the knobs on, obviously. And if you've got a really big case, you might want to even be leaving the patch cables in. So you've got to figure that out for yourself. Best way to do it is in two stages. So work out the depth from the top of your case to the panels of your modules and then work out the measurement from the top of the panel to the middle of the bolt hole and add those together and you'll get the full depth down from the top of your case. Now are you annoyed that your ruler has this useless bit at the end that's stopping you button it up and getting a proper measurement to the panel. Yeah, me too. That's why I made these ruler panels where it goes right to the edge. And if you flip it over, the numbers are still the right way up. So you can measure from the bottom or measure from the top. Oh, and it's a year rack panel. Now what I've done is I've set my square down to the depth of our bolt hole from the edge of the case. So I've put a piece of masking tape in roughly the area I know the mark's gonna be. I can put the square edge on there and then I can draw a line across here like that on both sides and on the other side of the case as well. Now I can make this a little bit longer and line up exactly with the marks that we did earlier and draw a line vertically down. There we go. That is exactly where our bolt's going to be. Now, of course, all the people that know what they're doing are screaming at the screen. you got to account for the width of the like, pen and the line. What side of the line are you measuring to? Well, uh, there is going to be a bit of a slop in the uh, hole here that we're going to make. So we can adjust around the rails a little bit. It doesn't have to be exactly, exactly, exactly spot on. But try and get it as close as possible, yeah? And before we move on to actually drilling double triple check it with your actual rails to make sure that you've not made a mistake okay we're nearly at squeaky bum time where there's no turning back but uh first you want to make a little indent in the metal with one of these punches that'll just make sure that the end of the drill bit gets guided and it doesn't wander off scratch all the nice paintwork on your tin just make sure that the edge of the point is right in the middle of your cross and then drive it on down make a little indent in there 
Drill bits are quite pricey, um, I know, because all of mine are blunt or twisted. And uh, if you want to sign up to the Patreon, um, that would be great so I can buy some new drill bits. But one way you can get around buying loads of different drill bits is getting one of these stepped bits. And they're actually quite good for this type of job. So on my rails, I'm using M4 bolts. So that's the size hole that I want to make. Awesome, that fits the bolt perfect. Now let's just clean up those holes a bit. You can use something like this deburring tool, but in my experience these don't work very well. Uh, the easiest way is to just very, very gently use the step drill bit to deburr the uh, metal uh, sharp bits that have gone on the inside of the case now. But be very gentle because it's quite easy to drill through and step to the next bit. You might want to use your clippers to clip off some of the big bits. And you can take your masking tape off now. So you could now just bolt your rails in, but there's a gap here and at the top. If you're on the £5 a month Patreon tier, I have a solution for you. Because I make these little panels that go in there and make everything look so much better. And so from my £5 a month Patreon tier, you can download the Gerbers to get these made for yourself. There's one for 42 HP with a silver and a white side, and there's one for 40 HP with a black and silver side. I'm going to show you how those go on, and it's simple enough because this type of rail has a slot in the top also, and if you get a standoff and a nut, you can slide that in there like this and then tighten it up and you've got a little standoff standing up. Do it on the other side, there you go. Obviously these standoffs need to be short enough to fit within this gap. Then you're gonna get some hook and loop and you wanna cut off a width the same size as your standoff from the fuzzy side. Peel off the sticky backing, put it on the middle, wrap it around and stick it back to itself so it makes a little tab like that do that on both sides and decide which of the two sides you want to use I'm going to use the white side so I'm going to stick the other half of the velcro on the back of that where it lines up with the tabs that we've put already on the standoffs and before you stick these on you want to get this in the case first it's easier to maneuver in there all right so put your rails in there get them pretty lined up with the holes you can see it down here. Let's get that in there. There we are. That's where we want that. Now if you put this in there and you just get the end of the screw to bite just with your hands, there you go. Now you've started it. So now you can get a screwdriver and properly drive it in there and it will tap its way into the rail. But you've got to make sure that you're going in straight. Okay, so just get each one started a little bit. Don't screw them all the way in just to get everything lined up. So now that we've got all four slightly started uh, and it's all lined up and looking good, let's get these uh, little panels in. Put one in the top here. Maneuver it around, press it down where the Velcro was, pack your hand underneath and press the Velcro from the fuzzy side up into the one that's on the stuck on the back of the panels. Now all of these tins, they've got a little lip where the uh, loop of metal overlaps. And so where your panel crosses that, you might want to make a little indent in it. And you could do that with an old screwdriver that you don't really care about that much and a big old hammer. And give it a big old whack. Okay, and once you're happy that they're all in, it's time to screw everything in. Oh, goodness me. This is going to hurt my hands. Best to do this with a screwdriver. Don't be lazy and use a drill. You don't want the metal to start work hardening and all sorts. It's, uh, yeah, tapping threads can go very wrong. Oh, yeah, that's looking proper, proper cool, isn't it? Look at that. Space case. But that is really only part of it. We still need to get some power in there so you can plug in all your modules. And for that, I've made this power supply PCB. And you can download the PCB files to get your own ones of these made, as well as these panels on my all access Patreon. And there's a video on there of me showing you how to solder all this together, as well as a video that shows you exactly how to order your own printed circuit boards. See you over there, yeah? The link's down, the, down below, down below. I'll give you a moment to click it. You can go click it now. I'm not going to do anything more in the video. This is just a really boring bit while I, I'm pointing, I'm pointing down to the link.
Yeah, it's down. No, it's down there. No, no, no. Scroll. Keep scrolling. Scroll down there. Yes, yeah, it's, there. it's there. Can you see it? Patreon. Yeah, click on that one. All right, cool. Why are you still here? Why are you look at? It's just a finger. Oh, there's nothing else happening in the video. Come on, click on it. Click, click or at least click on the Instagram. Go, follow me on Instagram. Go on. I, uh, I need some new more drill bits, please. <laughs> uh, look, my bloody drill bits. Are, look at this. Look, look at the state of that. That's terrible. I need more. I need more drill bits. All right, this really is the end. Bye. <laughs>